Hey, comic book fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. And fans, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to do comic book haul week number 203. Uh, that's right, guys. Now, it wasn't a big week for comics. However, I did get a bunch of miscellaneous stuff that this week, and this is kind of the haul for all ages. Whether you're a new reader, or an old reader, an independent reader, uh, I think this one is for you. It's got something in it that you'll probably like throughout this haul. So let's get started because there's a lots of cool stuff for you guys to see and comic book haul week number 203. Hey, that rhymes. So, first things first, I want to kick it off with the independent books that I got. Um, first one goes to my good friend, uh, Cat Comic Uno, uh, who has her own comic series out, like Father, Like Daughter. Uh, a few months ago, her number one debut issue uh, was released uh, by Boom. I'm sorry, by Boom, by Short Fuse Studios. I see that because it's like a boom. But Short Few Studios, and uh, and the first issue was really well done. And uh, now we get the second issue uh, of this story, and I'm highly excited for it. Uh, I give my hats off to Kat Kamakuno uh, for going out there and trying to find a publisher and getting her story uh, out there to the world. And uh, I will support her 100% no matter what. Uh, on the back of this, uh, when I received it, there's some cool little uh, prints here that I want to share with you guys. Uh, that sits there and goes, uh, uh, you have Invincible on there. And he says, uh, you'll see Casey's having your dad's powers. is going to be awesome. And she's like, oh, you, you really think so? And uh, Damien says, sure, unless your dad tries to kill you like his did. And so if you read Invincible, you know what goes on there. Uh, which I thought was really neat. And, and Casey's trying not to be like her father. Her father has these uh, powers who ran off on her, and she just discovered her powers in the first issue. And on this next one, we have another one that has Batman, Omni-Man from Invincible. Uh, and uh, it says, I truly feel like a proud father uh, when my son's power finally appeared. Oh, well, that's one way to look at it. Thanks. And then Batman ruins the day. And he sits there and he goes, he also tried to kill his son soon after. Not sure if he's the best option for parroting advice. So I, I thought that was really cool that I got those cool little prints in there. So uh, that was really neat. And then it just, there's a little coffee mug in there. And it just shows a uh, world's uh, greatest detective instead of dad. So really cool stuff. So again, I, I had to, you know, present myself a little bit to, to that series there. Uh, because Kat's a good friend of mine. We've known each other for a long time. So, uh, like father, like daughter. All right. Next, we go on to another independent comic that I, I picked up this week. And uh, I went to kind of like this um, Orlando Science Center uh, has this thing called a Tronicon. And uh, they have all these cool things where you can play video games and see how video games are created. But they also had a floor where they had some independent creators and artists and sketch artists and things like that. And so they had a couple of the artists that had their own comic books out. This one is called uh, Ronin uh, of Mashari Kingdom. It's almost like the creator kind of explained it to me like it's almost like Mario but in a samurai fashion and uh, the artwork is is really nice and the coloring is is absolutely beautiful in this book and uh, uh, when I was going through it so I was like oh wow this is really well done so uh, I was like oh I can't wait to see what this actually looks like so uh, definitely gonna be reading that this will be on the countdown for the week so this is Ronan issue number one and next, we got another book out here uh, from the independent creators, and this is called Ella Strange. Uh, not too sure what this one is really about. Uh, this particular book is a black and white. Uh, you can see that the artwork is very cartoony in here. Uh, it kind of looks like she has come some kind of... Uh, uh, maybe some mystical powers, but uh, again, this is the great stuff here. This is the stuff that you find that one day could be, uh, you know, the next creators of, of Marvel or, or their own thing or whatever it is. But uh, I'm excited to read these. And again, all three of these books will be in this week's countdown. So stay tuned for that. All right. So now we get on to the books that you get at the store every single day. And uh, I got a couple bags here, and I'll go with the actual comics first. So, first thing we wind up having, here's the original bag. 
and uh, we'll get to this week's comic. So, get that bag out on the floor. Uh, I got a pack of uh, bags and boards here, so that's got to get out of the way. Got to make way. I don't know where to put all this stuff. So, all right. First things first, um, I wanted to show you guys is that I wound up getting um, Crisis on Infinite Earths, the trade. Um, if you guys have subscribed to Comic Book Corner Old School, uh, I'm doing a review on Secret Wars 2. Now, uh, that was Marvel's answer to Crisis on Infinite Earths that came out within the same year of each other. So right now I'm reviewing Secret Wars 2. Once I get done with that, I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to do a comparison video between the two uh, events on which one I liked better. So uh, really excited to pick up this trade. Never read it. Heard great things about it. So Crisis on Infinite Earths. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe to Comic Book Corner Old School. All right. Next, we get into truly this week's comics, and we get Poison Ivy issue number one by DC Comics. My friends over at Comic Frontline sat there and said, uh, Mike, I read this already. You got to pick it up. So uh, I took their word on it. I'm definitely going to read it. I will do a review on it right here on Comic Book Corner 2.0. So stay tuned for that. All right. Next, we have... Ant-Man, issue number four. Uh, the continuation of this is, is pretty interesting as it continues this whole hench app where we get to see a bad guy. I created this app location that winds up sending bad guys after the good guys, and it's just a hysterical thing. And you can see, obviously, Ant-Man uh, gives it a thumbs down or a dislike on there, so which I thought was pretty neat. So uh, this is a good series, and it's about to get better soon. So uh, Ant Man issue number four. All right, next we have a book uh, that's highly anticipated, I feel, and that's Batman issue number forty-eight. Uh, we're getting to the conclusion of the whole Mister Bloom thing. Uh, supposedly, I think issue forty-nine, we're going to see the return of Batman, uh, whether it's one page or. Uh, or not, it, I guess, I think supposedly you will see him back in issue number 49. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. So that's Batman issue number 48. All right, next we have Captain Marvel issue number one. I've given this series many tries. I'm going to give it another try. I want to like Captain Marvel. I really loved her, you know, back before um, Marvel Now. And uh, I really want to enjoy this character more, and uh, hopefully this will be a good series. Uh, you open up the artwork. Artwork looks pretty cool. Uh, you know, again, Carol Danvers is always a character that piqued my interest, so I felt like this was a good jumping on point for me. So Captain Marvel, issue number one. All right, next we have uh, Deadpool issue number six. I'm definitely looking forward to this one as it uh, focuses on Deadpool, introducing Deadpool 2099. Now, is this a new character? Or is it just a different timeline? Like, what's going on here? Um, I'm not too sure. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, hold on to this one because anything that's related to Deadpool right now is worth money, whether it's Gwenpool. Uh, I found out that the uh, Marvel Now Deadpool issue number one has some value to it. Uh, so definitely, if you need to get your hands on this one for collection purposes, go ahead. Uh, but it looks like this Deadpool 2099 is female. So, uh, yeah, check this out right here. This is that opening page. Dude, it looks awesome. I'm kind of excited about it. I wonder, I'm going to review this one now. I'm kind of pumped for it. So this is Deadpool issue number six, the 2099 version. All right, next we go on to... Uh, Miss Marvel issue number three. Uh, Kamala Khan's not doing too well these days, or people look at her as traitors. Uh, she's a poster child for this development project that she never got permission for, and you found out that uh, Hydra's behind the whole thing. So uh, we'll see where this goes. So this is Miss Marvel issue number three. All right. 
Next, we go on to DC Comics, and uh, I've been on the fence with Sinestro lately. I don't like the current story arc that's going on. However, the last story arc at the end of it, Sinestro made Harley Quinn, Wonder Woman, Superman, Deathstroke, all into his Sinestro core members. So, what is he going to do with them? We'll find out. So, this is Sinestro core issue number 19. Alright, next we have... Star Wars issue number 15. Uh, this looks like more of a, I want to say a filler issue because it has to do with the um, Ben Kenobi's book installment. So this is kind of the, the gap in between Vader down and the next story arc here. But Star Wars is never a bad read. It's a very well done read. Uh, Jason Aaron hits it out of the park every single time. Um, and usually you have Stuart Mononen on the book. But it doesn't look like he's uh, going to do this issue because, again, it's it's that filler issue between stories. So this is Star Wars issue number 15. All right. Next, we have one of my favorite independent books from uh, 2015, and that is Tokyo Ghost uh, issue number 5. We get to see... Um, uh, what's his name, Dent, uh, and let Dent actually go back to his original form when he was hooked up on social media and all this other stuff, and he's trying to stop an enemy now. So this is great. This is you know a struggle between two people staying in love and trying to fight for their freedom. Uh, I think it's very well done. So Tokyo Ghost, issue number five. It's written by Rick Remender. All right, next we have one of my favorite covers of the week, and this is uh, goes to... Uh, Uncanny X-Men issue number two as Mystique is in the cover. She's lying on a bunch of dead soldiers, guns up in the air, just sitting there going, hey boys, <laughs> you know? So uh, I like that cover. I wasn't a huge fan issue number one. Uh, it was just more of Magneto being Magneto. They released some scared uh, uh, mutants. And, um, you know, Magneto's just saying, hey, you gotta, you know, you gotta be with us. You can't run away from the situation. And, uh, you know, you get an introduction of some of the characters in here. So hopefully we get the, the story fleshes out a little bit more. We get to see how these team uh, kind of came together because uh, you get that get eight month gap there. So we'll see where it goes. So this is Uncanny X Men issue number two. All right, next we have. A uh, new Wonder Woman issue. This is issue number 48. I think this starts a new story arc. Uh, and this one says, uh, The Poison Price. Uh, so uh, I'm anxiously reading, uh, waiting to read this one. Um, and David and Meredith Finch are both on this book. Uh, Finch, I think, took a, an issue break uh, on here. But his artwork is really well done. I think he draws Wonder Woman beautiful. Uh, she looks gorgeous in this series, uh, in this book. Great action scenes in here as well. The colors are well done. So uh, anxiously awaiting to see where this one actually goes. So this is Wonder Woman issue number 48. All right. And uh, last but not least, real quick, this book was damaged at my store last week. I did read it digitally, but this is called The Violent, and this is issue number two. This is a very realistic book, a uh, realistic characterization, but you really care for these characters. You want to see what happens for them. Um, you know, they go to, they're recovering from being in prison, trying to write, uh, walk the straight arrow. So, uh, good series. So, and this is issue number two. All right, so now we got some old school goodies in here that I picked up, which I thought was pretty cool because you don't see this stuff ever. And out of all the years that we go into my comic store, I've never seen these books before, uh, and I'll show them to you now. So here comes the second bag that's on the floor. And uh, first things first is I wound up getting a... A original Marvel graphic novel um, but written by Chris Claremont and this is issue number five or graphic novel number five from X-Men and this is God Loves Man Kills now this is not the original printing of this I think this is fifth or sixth printing of this actual graphic novel but this is back in the days uh, back in 1985 I think this one was made and um, this is going back in the time where graphic novels were, weren't reprints of stories. They were actually individual stories 
that didn't follow the main storyline. So uh, I thought this was really cool to have to put in my collection overall. Uh, I will be reviewing this over in Comic Book Corner Old School as well because this is just, again, something you don't see. So I was really excited by this one. And I didn't even mean to buy that one because this one was on the shelf first taking up its space. And I bought that one after I bought this one. And this is the Punisher original graphic novel series by Marvel. Um, at the time, priced at six ninety five, made in nineteen eighty eight. And this one's called the Assassins Guild, uh, written by Joe Duffy and George Safino. Uh, so again, this is just some original stuff that you don't get to see uh, in your comic shops. And uh, you know, when you open up the book in here. Um, it, again, this is just like magazine sized form and uh, this is just these classic stories and and look at this is how the artwork is. So this is true graphic novel form when I was growing up, uh, you know, this is how the graphic novels were. They weren't really reprints back then. There were all these original stories. So really excited about this and being that Punisher is about to explode once he hits Netflix and uh, shows up on Daredevil and then gets his own series. Uh, I think that these things like this are going to be uh, higher dollar value. So I'm totally excited to land this one. So uh, so there you have it, guys. There, There's the haul for this week, a, a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. It's a little bit of a lengthy one, so I apologize for that one. But I just wanted to share all that cool stuff that I got with you. So, guys, now it's your turn to tell me all the stuff that you got in the comments below, which ones you're most excited for. And, uh, fans, as always, thank you for watching Comic Book Corner 2.0. Don't forget to have to check out Comic Book Corner Old School. And, fans, this has been Comic Book Hall Week number 203. And thanks for watching, fans. Take care. See you soon. Bye.